<laughs> Alrighty. Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Michael Markowski. Welcome to my studio. Today, we are going to recreate another painting by another one of my favorite artists. And it is April Fool's Day today. So this is not a joke. We are going to be looking at the art of Larry Salk and definitely his most famous painting here, his painting of Kramer, or those of you who are fans of Seinfeld know him as Cosmo Kramer. And this is a, a famous painting that, uh, probably the, the most famous artwork that came out of the Seinfeld television series that aired from 91, I think, to 1999. And it uh, was in, I think, the 21st episode of season three, uh, the 38th episode overall of what would ultimately be 180 episodes over nine seasons of the Seinfeld um, uh, uh, mega brand that is still airing today, still setting records for a series that ended 20 years ago, over 20 years ago. So, this is the painting that we are going to recreate. It is a fun painting. I'll just say right off the top of the bat, like, if it ends up looking like Kramer from Seinfeld, or Michael Richards, the actor who played Kramer, that'll be great. If not, that's okay too, right? We're just gonna have fun today and see what we can do. So, let's go right up to the top here, just sort of look at the plan for today's class. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get an image onto the canvas. I'll show you how to do that. We're gonna put some paint on there to get the painting started. And then we're going to talk just briefly about Larry Salk. There's not a lot of information about him out there, uh, despite all the achievements he had. And then we're gonna kind of go bounce around back and forth between the background, foreground, background, foreground, until we finish the painting. And at probably in about three hours, we'll do our side-by-side -side comparison. This painting is gonna take us a little bit of time, so just have to be aware that uh, it's a, it, a painting like this is just, you know, take some take some time and patience. Anyway, uh, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Here's the different ways you can support the channel for absolutely nothing except maybe a little bit of your time and energy should you wish. And also, if you want to leave a donation, maybe after the end of today's episode, you're like, hey, actually, I kind of learned something. Here's a few ways that you can do that. The links are in the description below. Okay, so let's begin here. What um, we're going to do is do the image transfer, and that's uh, Tuesday's painting. So what I've got here is a 9 by 12 sized canvas board, and uh, this one I actually ordered off of Amazon. It doesn't have any label or anything on the back. This is not my favorite. They're, they warp a little bit when they get, so I'm not going to tell you what brand it is. There are other ones in the description below that I think are far superior. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to download, I, I printed off this uh, outline, and I'm going to show you where you can download that so that you can print it off yourself here. Come on. Okay. So you're, if you click in the description below, you'll see a Dropbox folder. And there's 170 folders within that Dropbox folder. You'll see all of our easy, or kind of intro painting uh, information is the very top. These next few are very simple paintings that anyone can do, uh, especially if you paint along with me. And then here over the next 150 uh, folders, these are all a little bit more complex, you know, intermediate to advanced paintings that you're welcome to, uh, to, to take a, uh, a try at. Here's number 143, Larry Salk. And here's the th three files that are in there. There's the original that we're gonna paint from, and then there's the outlines. So let's just take a look at those. So here's the original, and then here's the outline which I've provided to you for free. You can download it off the Dropbox, and then I print it out on my desktop, desktop inkjet printer here at home. You can use a laser jet printer, it doesn't matter. Um, you could even 
put some tracing paper on your computer screen and trace it if you don't have access to a printer. So once we've got that, I'm just gonna tape this down. Uh, earlier today, I spent two hours sanding about 150 of these panels because I also put a little bit of white gesso, white acrylic gesso on them to make them smoother. And then I sand them down so they're nice and super smooth. And that's gonna really help with today's painting. So next step, I'm gonna use carbon transfer paper. So this is, you, you know, if you're old enough to remember handing your credit card over at a department store or a restaurant and they put it in that machine, ka-chunk, chunk. Right, that's the exact same things. It would leave an impression and you get that, that receipt in your back pocket. So I'm gonna use this carbon paper. Now, I'm not gonna trace over everything. I'm just gonna do kind of the basics. So for instance, like when it comes to the hair here, I'm just gonna go kind of around the outside edge. And then same thing on the forehead here. Our daughter just came home from the park with our nanny. And <laughs> she sounds like they've had some fun, which is good, right? Okay. So this face is pretty complex. So as I said, you know, we'll, we'll do our best to try to get a likeness here. But if it doesn't completely turn out, that's all right as well. We can still work on the, the basics of like mixing colors and applying color to a canvas and brush control and all that. And if it turns out that it looks like this famous television character and an actor, then that's great. If it doesn't, that's not a problem either, right? At least as far as I'm concerned. I know there's some people who who obsess over getting a likeness, making things that, you know, if it doesn't look like someone when people are doing a portrait, they feel like a failure. I understand that um, sentiment, but I, th I really think that that's um, most artists over the, the past hundred years or so have have become less and less concerned with the idea of likeness and are more interested in artistic creativity and expression because we have a f camera in our pocket now all the time and we could take hundreds of photographs in an instant and um, that you know the kind of thing that used to take artists weeks to do we can do in a matter of moments so if you want a likeness take a picture get it done with real quick why fuss over it in a painting that's my thinking personally um, anyway uh let's see i think that's we'll do a little bit of these wrinkles i guess just so that they're um Maybe just these fingernails. So let's take a look. How did we do? Do we get everything on there? That's pretty good. These eyes. Just circle them a little bit and make sure. <laughs> okay. I think I'm good with that. There we go. So I'll just clean this up. I like to, actually, you know what? I'm gonna keep that out there just in case I wanna to refer to it. Okay. Actually, you know what? My plan is this afternoon to do a whole bunch more outlines. So I'm gonna just leave that out there. 
Okay, so now that I've got the outline done, Now that we've got the outline done, let's start putting some paint on the canvas. And the first step that we do here is to do what's called the imprematura. And this is the first layer of paint. It's uh, essentially staining the canvas, right? So there's lots of different ways to do this. The, uh, the way that I like to do this is with some warm yellow. And uh, it's not, I'm really probably the only person that does this, but uh, I like to use this color. In fact, let's just, so if you're wondering like, what color am I using? Here's the colors that I'm using. So when I was talking about using a warm yellow. This is the actual color. This is the brand that I use, not sponsored or paid by them. But if you want to replicate exactly what I'm doing, this is what I'm, I'm doing to do this, right? Um, Amsterdam paint is a good sort of student grade paint. Not the best, not the, not the worst for the money. Pretty good, right? Golden, here's what you could do if you wanted to get a much higher grade of paint. Uh, you know, so for instance, golden, uh, like this tube of paint, I think costs like $10 roughly. Might might be $12, $9, depending on where you get it, what country you're in. Um, for a tube like this from golden would probably be like $50, maybe more, right? Because most of their tubes are probably a third the size of this, and they're like $20, $30, right? So obviously you can tell the difference the price is, it can be quite uh, dramatic liquitex they also make a, a more expensive brand this is their less expensive student grade brand windsor and newton this is their acrylic line they also they make mostly oil paints artist loft which is owned by michael's art supplies buzz pebo holbein Tyler Rowney, these are all the recommendations that for all the different brands that if you want to follow them. Okay, so let's, uh, let's, I'm going to take my warm yellow, I'm going to squeeze some paint out here. That's probably good enough. And let me get some water. I forgot to get my water, so let's do that. usually have that all ready to go. So I just take a little bit of water. That's maybe a little bit much. That's a bit better. And then I'm just gonna stir it up. This is the only time I ever put water in my acrylic paint. Because with this process, we're effectively just staining the canvas so we want to have, you know, paint that's maybe a little bit more transparent. Um, I've, since I've got gesso right on here, the gesso absorbs water really well. So it, it, it stains really, you know, I mean, that's, that's sort of what gesso is for, is it absorbs your, your initial paint so that everything else sticks to it really well. Gesso is kind of essentially basically plaster powder and suspended in a, an acrylic medium. Like we use matte medium. You could, you could probably make your own gesso uh, with just plaster powder and acrylic medium. I don't know how you would get it so that it doesn't harden into like uh, a block. That's something for a chemistry student or teacher to answer, but uh, that's essentially what it is. So if you've ever used plaster, you can you know how plaster just sucks up uh, paint and water. Okay. Good, 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 good. So now we'll let this dry and let's take a quick little moment just to talk a little bit about uh, who Larry Salk was um, because he's, he passed away a few years ago. So uh, let's, well, I should also just mention just right off the 
if you haven't already joined the Facebook group, there's a link in the description for that. I encourage you to take a photograph of today's painting, whether you're, you're painting Kramer by Larry Salk or another painting that we've done. We've done over 200 of these episodes or it's something else you're working on on your own that is meaningful to you. We would love to see it. And tomorrow we do one of our feedback episodes. It's the 18th feedback episode we've done. And I encourage you to come back and, and sit in and, and take a look at all the great art that people like you have been making. If maybe you're all you're already one of these people, right? And I also I, I, I spend quite a long time <laughs> putting together some research. Here's the research for today's episode, uh, a little bit of the biography of Larry Salk. So um, <laughs> that's a great picture. Oh my goodness. Oh that sounds like someone trying to squeeze the paint out of these tubes. Oof. Um, there, there's, despite the fact that there's, uh, Larry Salk created so many artworks, there's very little information. In fact, here's, um, his, uh, obituary from the Los Angeles Times. Um, let me see. I think maybe it's worth just sort of looking at images of his work since, and we can kind of talk a little bit about his biography as we go here. Um, let's see. Uh, Larry Salk was a illustrator and commercial artist who began his career working in the fashion industry, doing fashion illustration. His parents worked in or, or had a... Uh, uh, a clothing manufacturing company in Los Angeles and when he was a kid he spent a lot of time with them and during the summers he would work in the family business and so it wasn't kind of a stretch and he was always drawing always carrying a sketchbook around with him always making artwork and so it wasn't a stretch when later on he, he went into fashion illustration because he had spent so much time around fabric and clothing and and um, so that was sort of how he made his initial mark. Um, I thought I had a, a page here. Huh. Uh, there, oh, this is a book of his fashion illustration. Uh, I actually had this from the library. I, I was planning on doing today's episode a year and a half ago, or I guess two years ago, and uh, it just never came. So I actually had this book from the library so it's really great all of the illustrations that that he did he's a fantastic illustrator and he, he was doing that for a number of years doing illustrations for magazines newspapers um, advertisements in and for uh, you know catalogs for department stores and uh, doing designs actually for clothing companies you remember like he began his career kind of in the late 1950s early 60s and at that time most you know advertisements for clothing were not photographs of people wearing clothes but often illustrations of people wearing clothes and uh, it wasn't really until kind of the mid 60s on where we have more and more uh, photos of of models and celebrities wearing clothes right and if you if you've seen mad men the television series starring john ham all about the uh, advertising industry you you might have noticed a little bit of that a lot of the earlier episodes the the staff is creating drawings and then later on photography plays a larger and larger importance in in the advertising industry anyway Long story short, if you're interested in his his um, uh, in his fashion illustration, here's a link to the book. Here, I'm sure you could find it cheaper than this. Uh, anyway, um, a few other. So, after working in the fashion industry for about ten years, he moves into doing some commercial illustration for Hollywood, for, for films and television shows. And that sort of becomes his sort of bread and butter for the remainder of his career, where he's he's doing like, let me see, did we see a few posters here? Like, 
a lot of kind of obscure things like these kind of B movies and, and things. Um, a lot of movies that I've never heard of, but there's a few like Superman and things that he, he did as well. Um, and, you know, I think this is, there's some, it's unbelievable for an artist who did so much and whose art is so visible. You'd see like some, there's illustrations he did of like Meryl Monroe that's just sold recently 10 years ago for $600. Like, uh, like this is a beautiful drawing here. Let's, let's, this, I love this one. Like that is an incredible painting and by a well-known artist and I can't remember what the estimate, what was the estimate for this one? $600. So it sold probably somewhere around that, that mark. <laughs> Anyway, the considering we're, we're, we've had a whole discussion about Barnett Newman's Voice of Fire selling for a million and a half dollars to the National Gallery of Canada, you know, 30 years ago, I guess now, you know, and whether you agree with that or not, it seems like some of Larry Salk's artwork should certainly be selling for a lot more than $600, right? Um, I think it's just interesting to look, so here's some of his, the movie posters he did. And um, the you know if we look at a few of these, I think it's interesting to see the difference between the poster that was eventual that that was created from his illustration, and this is the illustration itself, right? Obviously, leaving lots of empty space for titles and credits and all that kind of stuff, and. And same sort of thing for for people illustrating book covers, magazine covers. Always trying to having to be aware of leaving lots of space so that text can go into those spaces and not be kind of too obscured by um, by like a confusing background. Anyway, so that's just kind of I thought that was kind of it's neat to see the the formation, the evolution of of an artwork in from the original painting into its final iteration as a poster. Uh, just before we move on here, I just want to just sort of talk a little bit about today, the painting we're about to do today, which again is by far his most well-known artwork. Um, so it, it aired as part of this episode, The Letter. And it, this is a pretty funny episode. It's uh, where Kramer gets his portrait painted and um, George is op feels like obligated to, to buy something by the same. Anyway, I won't go into you, you can watch. I'm sure the episode is is up on Netflix or Prime or Apple Plus or whatever other um, uh, channels are out there that are airing old things. I think this is funny. You can order prints of this this um, painting of the original uh, there's you can order it from a number of different places I don't know if this company here has this website the Kramer painting.com is has it licensed or um, but anyway they have a little bit of information about the painting itself and um, you know, no one has been able to find the real painting I think with a lot of things like this commercial artwork often there wasn't really, you know, once it was photographed and used in an ad or for a poster, etc., sometimes the work would just be thrown out or it would be held in storage somewhere and it might... So I'm, I'm, I bet you this painting, if it still exists at all, is probably, you know, somebody who worked at the... the um, this movie studio probably just took it home. It was pr probably one of those things like... A producer said to an intern, like, hey, there's a stack of stuff over there. Just, we're going to toss it. If there's anything in there you want to take home, go ahead. I mean, I, I, I know I've worked for a number of uh, companies in the past where stuff like that happened. It's like, ah, have your pick. If there's anything in there you want, better take it now before it's gone. Uh, so anyway, I just thought that that's interesting. And actually, you know what? Right before we move on, I did want to mention as well that Larry Salk, uh, Lawrence Michael, quote unquote, Larry Salk, he was known as Larry by, by most people within the industry. He also made quite a name for himself as a military illustrator and painter. He 
was part of the uh, U.S. Air Force. Um, let me see. I have it. <laughs> it's uh, the U.S. Air Force Documentary Art Program, which is very similar to what in Canada we call the War Artist Program, uh, which I was honored to, to be a member of, um, where they take artists and they embed them with the military for maybe a weekend or a few weeks or a month uh, and get to spend some time with the men and women who serve and uh, try to understand a little bit about their experience and then to create artwork based on those experiences and the the paintings he did for the Air Force are incredible these are beautiful paintings and, and I know it's not everyone's taste you know some people are not into this kind of stuff but I think it's hard to deny the, the, the incredible beauty of these paintings just on their own. There was another really cool one. Let me see if I can find it. Um, of course, I won't be able to find it right now. I, I, I should also mention that um, I was unable to find a single photo of Larry Salk. So if you're related to Larry Salk, you're a friend or a, 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 you know, a, a fan, and you have a photograph of Larry Salk somewhere, please send it to me and I will replace the thumbnail that currently has George wearing that giant hat. I'll replace it with an actual photo of Larry Salk. Um, which is surprising considering uh, Larry Salk himself became the president of this the Society of Illustrators of America and was later honored by that organization as for a Lifetime Achievement Award. Anyway, I can't find the painting I was looking for. So let's just dive right into it. I think we're ready to begin today's painting. So I think maybe the first thing we ought to talk about beyond getting some paint on the on our palette in here in a second is underpainting. Do we want to do any underpainting? Do we need to do any underpainting? And typically, again, we've talked about this many times, an underpainting can be a lot of different things. Some artists will, will talk about underpainting as what I tend to talk about my, my first pass of the background and foreground. But, um, other artists will talk about underpainting as sort of just doing some line work because often artists might do a little bit of an under drawing which is what we might consider this to be and then afterwards do the underpainting is just sort of quickly outlining a few things on there uh, or they might even skip the underdrawing process and go right to the underpainting and then from there start blocking in the larger color shapes so I think we will do a little bit of underpainting using the second definition there. So before we do that, let's get some paint on this palette. Um, I might have to open some new tubes. Or you know what? I might. See, one thing I do is I've got these jars of paint and I, I keep, I never, remember to open them up and use this and then they get really really full so I'm gonna and they seem to kind of slow dry so I'm gonna instead of squeezing paint out of tubes I'm gonna make it a point today to try to use up paint that's in these little jars because that's what I do with when my paint starts to get down to the ends I scoop them out of these Obviously, making sure that these your um, palette knife is very clean. Because we don't want to contaminate that jar with other colors, obviously, right? So I've got my cool blue, my cool red. Let's get our warm red. And I'm going to put a bit of that 
right there because I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna use to mix my darker color shortly here. <laughs> okay, so this warm yellow, since I use a lot of warm yellow, like <laughs> in that painting, that jar is empty. And I should also mention, if I haven't, I, I, that if I've got extra paint left over at the end of the day, rather than just scooping out and putting it in the garbage, what I've been doing is continuing to work on my Jay DeFeo recreation here. Jay DeFeo was a great American artist who worked on a number of paintings, but this particular painting called The Rose for decades where she would just constantly apply more and more and more paint. Oh, man. <laughs> Look at this grossness. These jars are not very good. So this yellow has kind of gone rotten. Ah, I wonder if I can salvage something. Should I try to salvage something out of this right now while we're on camera? Oof, it just stinks. I wonder if there's anything left in the, of use. And that I probably will not put on my J. DeFeo painting, because if it's molding like that... So I think... I think that could be okay. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't smell too bad. I, think I got the stinky stuff out. We'll see. I mean, I have noticed that that happens, right? That uh, that paint acrylic paint can go rotten because you know it's water based and wherever there's water bacteria can form right so if the, you have a tube that is you know got a it's slightly open and it's been sitting slightly open for a long time it's going to be leaking paint or leaking letting air in and it can rot the paint right bacteria can start to kind of form in there. Whew. <laughs> well, he says definitely don't eat it. Yeah, good idea. Right, well, you don't think I should take just a little taste? You don't think a little, a little taste should, uh... <laughs> that is so gross. That, I don't know if you can see that. So we'll see, you know. I I be I'm kind of it, it seems appropriate to me that our painting for April Fool's Day could end up rotting. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll see, you know. Okay. So I've got uh, Donna says throw it out. Um, <laughs> You, uh, let's mix some paint here. So I previously put a little bit of warm red here. That looks a little bright. Okay, I'm not sure why everything looks so bright in, on there today. 
Um, so I'm going to take some of my warm blue and warm, or sorry, this is warm red and cool blue that I'm mixing here together. I have a feeling we're going to be using a color like this for the background, so that's why I'm making kind of a little, a good amount of it. I'll probably have to make even more here shortly. And you can see when I mix these together, I get a, a really dark purple, which is not a, a bad color in and of itself. Um, and I could just use this color. I think I'm just for our sake, might as well just sort of talk a little bit about making our own um, gray or, or black, basically. Put a lot of that yellow in there. And so if it looks, that looks very brownish. That just tells me I probably need to put more blue in there. And I mix this together. And I get basically a, a really dark, dark gray. So let's move our painting into position. And what I'm gonna do next is, is just do a little bit of underpainting, painting some of the uh, facial features and other parts like the hands that I might be a little bit afraid could disappear under subsequent layers of paint. So, side by side I was painting in the hairline And like using a, a brush like this just to kind of act as a uh, little portable palette. Let's do kind of quickly the outer edge here. Now remember, I'm going to paint over all of this and the background is going to cover up a lot of detail.
basically I'm just thinking to myself, if a lot of stuff got obscured by paint, were, what would be the, the clues that would be most helpful for me? You know, it, would be, it might be things like, you know, even like a little fold like this in the arm. That would be kind of helpful because if I got that fold, I could then find where these buttons are, right? Or, or vice versa. If I know where that button is, that's going to really be very helpful. Like we did a little bit of this in yesterday's episode of the Timothy Boychuk um, painting, which I think turned out really good. I was so it took a long time. It was like a five-hour painting, but it turned out really good. It's one of my favorite paintings we've done so far, and you know, a little bit of line work like this I think can ultimately save the day. I don't usually do too much of this on my own, in my own painting, like I'm working on a graphic novel right now and um, I'm doing the whole thing, I'm, I'm painting by hand and um, I, I haven't really done much of this at all, but I've also got 30 plus years of experience painting, right? So um, I, I feel much more confident about my ability to you know let's say let's say I just completely obscured the hands and they were just like I you know it would be a little bit of a trick for me to 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 eyeball that and draw it back in but I've pretty confident I could do it um, but I know a lot of beginner artists really struggle uh, with doing some of this kind of stuff so having something like this established can make your life a lot easier now right now it also we've we've kind of lost a little bit of that likeness that we talked about right so um you know if we compare these two side by side they look kind of different what i was mostly concerned about i want to know where the lips are i want to know where the tip of that nose is where the eyes are kind of even where the pupils are you know where the eyebrows are where this wrinkle it like I want to know where things are right and if I know where they are then I can spend as long as I want trying to get the shape of the eye right as long as I know where the eye the center of the eye actually is because that's that's really kind of the the main issue when it comes to a, you know doing a portrait is just getting the proportions right and so right now our proportions are correct or at least correct according to the original artist's vision right if we're trying to do a reproduction of it or trying to recreate it versus if we were eyeballing this whole thing you could see all sorts of of uh, distortions could happen pretty quickly Oh my goodness <laughs> a lot of a lot of comments here in the chat what was what's going on there's Deborah Lowy Donna um, oh <laughs> when I was sniffing that uh, that yellow paint looked like I was gonna take a bite out of it that would you never know. Things could get kind of silly around here. It is April Fools. Maybe, maybe I'll like, just lose my mind halfway through here and pull a Van Gogh and start uh, eating my paint. Um. Uh, Donna says my youngest granddaughter lost her first tooth today. I said it was an April Fools joke. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny that poor kid is like oh that's that doesn't seem like a, a joke is how do I get my glue my tooth back in that is pretty funny that is great 
<laughs> oh, uh, okay. So, now that we've got this established, let's move on. Okay. So now let's put some color into the background. And for our purpose in today's painting, the background is, is relatively straightforward, right? We have this background that is kind of a gradient of colors. And then we have our foreground, which is Kramer himself, right? Sometimes we have backgrounds that are really complex. Today's background, we can make as complex or as simple as you want. Now, you can see that there there's actually quite a lot of color here. So while it, we could just do a, a real quick black background and just be done with it, I think we want to actually have maybe a little bit lighter colors around the head because his hair is dark. So you can see what Larry Salk did here is that we've got this dark hair and then he's lightened the background around it to make that pop. But we have the opposite down here. We've got his coat is light, right? So the, if we had this same color right next to the coat, the coat would disappear into the background. So he's modifying the value so that we go from light to dark. And it's not even just a, a straight transition down. It's sort of, there's a little bit of a variety here. So, um, it depends on how close we want to try to, to mimic this. What would be... One thing we could do... I mean, I, I don't know what the original painting looks like. I, I almost suspect that what we've got is like a cool blue with then some brown... Uh, layers over top of it or just a, a very cool brown bluish brown with subsequent layers of kind of rusty reds over top of that so how long do we want to spend on that background um, let's try to just go a little bit faster so uh, I'm gonna just move that out of the way Let's go for a cool, a blue, a kind of a cool bluish brown as our foundational layer, and then we'll darken it with a bit more of a reddish brown, a cool reddish brown as well. So to do that, what we'll do is we're gonna take the more of this cool yellow. In fact, I'm gonna use a bit more of it. so excited to use some of this paint I always forget to do it and there's been times where I've got so much of it that I can't close the lids and that's probably how that that cool yellow started to rot because the lid wasn't on there it's very tight so I'm gonna take this cool blue and uh, let's mix we'll do it right where should we do it let's do this let's do it right here here. Take a bit more of that. Okay. So I'm taking my cool red. Okay. And let's just take a big scoop of this cool yellow. So now we're going to mix a coolish orange or just a slightly more muted orange. some blue in here so you can see it gets pretty close to that color that we we mixed there earlier but I think I want something a little bit more like this a little bit of a bluish thing going on And I'm also going to add some white to this mixture. Just make sure I don't put too much. All right, so you see it's got a little bit of a bluish gray. And I think that's going to be pretty close. Let's just take a look at them side by side. 
So what I'm looking for, it's kind of hard to see. It's it's inside here, not this sort of lighter, but it's, <laughs> how close can we get into here? It's kind of like this color that's underneath, that I think is underneath all that. Okay. So I just want to see if, do I need to make more of this or can I get away with that? You know what? I'm going to actually put a little bit of matte medium in it just to, to thin it out a little bit. got enough of that. Let's apply the paint to the painting. I do just thinking about like that paint that's kind of that yellow as it was rotting. I I'm pretty sure I'm not, I can't I'm not a chemist or a scientist, but I would I'm I my I would suspect that as that paint dries, any bacteria in there would would. Uh, not be able to survive once all that water is, is gone. I could be wrong. A acrylic paint is is plastic. Once it dries, it turns into plastic, right? So, you know, I don't know if bacteria can survive um, within inside of plastic and continue to grow. I suppose if if there was, you know, if it was in a really humid climate. It might still be able to, but I think that'd be pretty unlikely. You never know. Maybe, maybe what I'm creating here is the next mega virus, and a hundred years from now, people will look back at this video and say, "This is where the world's latest calamity all spun from." <laughs> I hope not, but. Uh, okay. And Rachel's joining us. Hi, Rachel. So that, I might have gone a little bit dark. I could probably have put a little bit more white in there. Um... But that's okay, because I can also lighten a little bit up here, and then I can darken down there afterwards. Um, I just don't want to spend too long on, on backgrounds, which I sometimes end up doing. Uh, oops, I just forgot. I remember my painting pants are in the dryer. They didn't quite dry in time. So I'm wearing a good pair of pants, and I just want to make sure I'm not going to wipe. I have a habit of wiping my paint off of my pants. keep my hands to myself so let's uh let's blow dry this and then maybe i will do a little bit of lightening up and around the head and then we'll darken the rest okay so where's my hair dryer
Okay, so this this color that I want to put on top here is a kind of um, it's a bit of like a green, a really kind of light gray green, super muted uh, green. So let's take some more of our rotten yellow. And where should we do this? Let's see if I, I might as well try to use up most of this yellow today. And just I'd probably just toss the rest of this out. Because I'm, I'm quite confident that this, I nailed that color. And, it, and, you know, it could just be the pixelation of the computer screen. But I think that's probably pretty close to what he would have seen at some point in that painting. So now let's take some of this cool blue and cool yellow. Maybe let's do that right here. Some white. That's a kind of cool color. I like that. Um, but let's also now take some of this dark color and bring it in here. Basically, what we're doing is, is taking that white and this black, turning it into a gray to see if we can get. green. Let's see how close we are. I think we could go lighter, but I think that's okay. We don't, we don't have to belabor this kind of too much. I'm going to put a little bit of matte medium Again, just to thin it out because I don't want to just obliterate there's because there's a bunch of white in here I don't want to obliterate what I just did I just want to kind of add some nuance to it right on the lighter side. Uh, it's okay. Actually, that's not bad. Not bad. Now I'm kind of overworking it a bit. Okay, I think. I think that's good. I'll blow dry this. And then we're going to put our brown over top of that. <laughs> that is cool, Lolly. I did not know there was a virus emoji. That is pretty funny. <laughs> that's cool. Um, okay. So let's see. Yeah, we're going to blow dry that real quick.
Okay, and then final step now is to make this brown, this uh, cool brown. So, just drying that brush off a bit. Remember, we don't want to have too much water in there. So now I'm going to take th this uh, cool yellow. Let's add some uh, cool red to it. And I'm not afraid to get any of that um, green in there, although I don't really want too much white. That's the one thing. So I just want to be careful because there is some white in there. Now let's take this cool blue and bring this in here. So that's a bit more on the greenish side. Actually, you know what? That's not... If I, I just have to look at them side by side here. Hmm. Just, it does need to go a little bit darker. So rather than just adding more cool blue to it, because I'm afraid that's going to go into like a dark, dark, like a, a gray um, too quickly. I want to keep it in the brown. I'm going to add some of this, my dark uh, color. I also need more warm red, or cool red, sorry. Keep it in the brown. There we go. That's getting good. I think I'm going to add some matte medium here. And then I'm going to just take as much paint off my brush as possible. probably seems like why did we put that gray that dark color underneath all of this when we just went and painted brown over it's because that color especially you know it's hard to maybe see right now but as it dries that color will start to kind of come through more and more
that's getting pretty close. Now I want to let, I'm going to blow draw. Well, should I try to mix a little bit in? Let's see. We just take some of our darker color. I should probably, yeah, I'm going to blow dry this here just because otherwise I'm going to start scraping paint. Darkening this down just even more down below here. Last night I watched the movie Power of the Dog that won a bunch of Academy Awards. I don't know if anyone's seen that movie. Pretty good. It is a little, you know, ever all the reviews say it's very slow and which is true. It doesn't I don't know if it makes it a bad movie. I think a lot of sometimes I think really good movies are some of the slower movies. Um, I think people just don't have the attention span they used to have. Um, do I want to make that darker? I might want to make this side just a little bit darker. So I'm actually just going to blow dry that again. jacket sort of flaring out a little bit there at the bottom. <laughs> so. That's good. I think, you know, it, it is, it looks very brushy up top there, but I think that's fine. I'm totally fine with that. In fact, I kind of like, like that. So, um, I know it's not everyone's sort of cup of tea. But, uh, and, and we certainly we could spend more time doing a little bit more nuance in there, but. Uh, Donna says, I've been trying to watch The Unforgiving Foe for three days now. 
I haven't heard of that one. Is that was that an Academy Award nominated film or? Um, I didn't watch the Oscars except the. <laughs> I, I do know what happened during the Oscars with Chris Rock and Will Smith, but uh, I did not watch the Oscars or really even follow who won anything. Um, I'm just also a big fan of westerns, so I felt I had to kind of watch that one. And it was interesting being the fact that it was directed by a woman. Westerns um, tend to be mostly about men and violence, so it, it was really interesting seeing a woman do a, a very meditative movie about masculinity set as a Western. I thought that was like a really interesting choice. Anyway. Um, let's go. Now that we've got our background, I, I think finished. We'll see. We, we may decide to, to do a little bit more afterwards. You never know. I, I don't want to say we're totally done, but I think I'm, I'm satisfied enough to be able to move on. So, we look here. I may even, just because I'm a little anal retentive. Odona says, The Unforgiven. Oh, uh, The Unforgiven. I, I, I see. The typo is The Unforgiving Foe. Okay. Yes, the un the movie Unforgiven. Yes, yes, that's that's a great. I think that's a great movie. Um, one of my favorites for sure. Let's see, get these out of the way. So now that we've got the background done. Let's start putting in some colors for the foreground. Greg says, I liked Power of the Dog. It is interesting, that Power of the Dog, after watching it, it it's, it's one of those movies that gets better upon reflection afterwards. You're like, huh. I, I Now that I kind of I see how the ending played out, there's a little bit of a twist there. You kind of start... Because I started kind of then going back and watching parts of it, going, ah, okay, that's actually not bad acting. That's pretty good acting. That's. <laughs> you ever have that experience where you watch a movie, and you're like, oh, look at this. This guy is so poorly miscast. And then by the end, you're like, actually, they did a great job. I, they, they got me. They got me going there. That's interesting. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so. Focus. Okay, so let's. Um, I think for this painting, what I want to do probably. Well, I was going to say I was going to do the flesh tones first and then go to the clothing. But. If we. I guess it doesn't really matter if this is our first pass through this area. Um. Maybe let's do some flesh tones real quick here. So the first thing I would do painting something like this is, is look for what we call the local color. So the local color, let's say of my hand, right? We, I have a lot of different colors in my hand. I've got like a little bit of a highlight here. So I don't wanna mix that color, nor do I wanna mix the darkest colors between my fingers. I'd wanna sort of find the local color that sort of exists in all of this, and then I can kind of modify from there. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna mix my hand, we're gonna look at the painting. So, and there's there's also different zones of the face where different colors exist, but the color that it seems kind of predominantly in here is a bit of like a, Might 
be this sort of like orangey, peachy color here. I mean, one of the things Kramer's kind of famous for is for being uh, like tanned, right? So we probably want to have a, a color that is a little bit darker than the Caucasian flesh tone that we sometimes paint, like that we painted just yesterday. We want something that is maybe just a little bit more on, on the brown side as opposed to the peachier side. So let's take... Um, to mix this color, we're going to use our warm yellow, warm blue, and warm red. But we'll start out with warm yellow. We're going to use a, probably 50% or more warm yellow. So we'll take a bunch of this here. And then we're going to mix with some warm red. And notice again, I always like to kind of put them side by side and then pull them in as necessary. So get this orangey color. And then let's take some warm blue. Now that's, that's way more than I need. In fact, let's just see with a little bit that's on my brush. Okay, actually that's, that's not a, a, a bad start here. It's a little bit dark. Uh, which is what we want. We want to get to somewhere like this. And then now we're going to add a little bit of white into this color. So if we take a look. Oops, let's go to that. That's that's not bad. I'm gonna, I think I want to just get a little bit more slight oops I might have a bit too much red so if you overdo it a little bit that's okay okay I think, I think that's pretty good so now I'm just gonna take this I'm actually just gonna go right over the whole face Don't forget if you've got that sometimes sometimes what people sometimes forget is the neck and the hands while we've got this color all mixed up we want to use it So mixing like a local color is a little bit of like um, is a little bit like trying to use like X-ray vision or something, which we don't actually have. So I don't. I don't hope I didn't surprise anybody. But we don't. Humans don't actually have X-ray vision, so you kind of have to like um, you're. It, this I guess it just comes with practice because you're thinking like what is the color in between the darks and the lights right the, that's sort of going to be underneath everything in the same sort of way I was looking for that green that is underneath this brown right and I think it just comes with practice uh, looking at a lot of paintings and the more you, the more you paint and the more you look at other paintings the more you start to become familiar with the way that artists layer color 
and there's certainly lots of other artists on YouTube, people who specialize in portraiture, who I'm sure um, will probably teach similar things like this, but would obviously use a more complex color palette than I'm using. Okay. So, uh, I think let's do some hair here. So again, if we want to look at this hair, we want to think about like, what is the, is there an underlying color underneath everything here? And I kind of see a little bit of this, mid, almost like a bit of a magenta purple. Now that's, that's probably to do with the printing process or the photograph and the way it's being compressed as a JPEG. So it's that's always kind of one of the tricky things with doing anything that we're doing here. But it does make me think of adding a little bit of like a brown that has got a little bit more of a purple quality. So, so a brown that just has a little bit less yellow in it. Um, so, uh, let's take, I'm just thinking if I can use anything I've got here. Um, let's take some warm red, oops, and some warm blue. We'll mix these together. And already we're going to get a purple, a, like a brownish purple. In fact, that's not... It's not bad. It's just maybe a... Maybe I... Can I use that? Would that be... Let's let's try it. You never know until you try it. Ah, uh, yeah, let's... I'm going to do it. I'm going to roll with it. I'm going to take this and put that in there. So I'm just going to paint right up to the... Just cover up my yellow. And we're going to have some kind of hair that's going to go beyond this just a little bit into the background. Like there's, you know, these little spindly pieces, right? So we just want to make sure that those go over top of the background. What does he look like there? Some kind of weird combination of David Bowie and... I don't know what... <laughs> you know, I don't know, you just gotta laugh. You gotta laugh sometimes at your paintings. Otherwise, it can be kind of unpleasant experience. Uh, okay, so let's. we're gonna leave the face like that for a few minutes. Let that hair dry, do its thing. Again, that's just the local, it's sort of, it's not even, it's even lighter than the local color. It's sort of just a color that's existing underneath everything. That's going to give that brown just a little bit of fun. So it's, so it's not just a plain color. Cause you know, like, like if even I just look at my hair right now, yes, there's maybe a dominant color. It's maybe like a brown or dark color, but I've got some gray happening in here. Um, there's also a little bit of my skull coming, you know, you can see a little bit of my scalp coming through in certain places. Um, there's going to be highlights, reflected light bouncing off of different shapes here in the studio. So that's also, that would be included in, in a painting like this. In fact, the way that I, when I look at this painting, probably some of that color we're seeing there assuming this is based on it like probably Kramer Poe or Mike Michael Richards the actor who plays this uh, character probably posed in front of a, a backdrop that was probably similar and that is probably some reflected light oops bouncing off this onto his hair potentially right so we're sort of capturing a little bit of that as we painted 
Um, okay. So now let's just continue. We, I guess we'll do the jacket and the collar, and then we'll we'll uh, then go kind of back onto the the face and start working in, in trying to get that close to completion, right? So does it matter what we do next? I don't know. Um, I'm trying to remember all the colors. <laughs> this is quite the palette today. Uh, let's do. Let's do the collar first. So that collar is a, kind of a cooler blue. So we'll take our cool blue and some white. Get this kind of baby blue. Let's take a bit more of it. I'm just going to paint this whole thing blue and we'll put some white back over top of that. And notice like when I do this I paint over a little bit of these these darker lines. You can kind of keep depending on 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 where they are, you can kind of keep some of them but paint over most of it. Sometimes I leave just a little bit of those lines to almost to act as an outline. Okay. And I just also want to make sure that there's not a little bit of like a shirt poking out down at the bottom of the jacket or, or anything like that, right? Because those that sometimes happens and, and I just learned from experience that, you know, ah, you go, oh, I forgot that, or, you know, like, or let's say a little bit of a sleeve or something. Uh, I don't see any of that. I'll, I do see a bit of a blue, that same blue as a little bit of a highlight, reflected light here. So we just have to keep that in mind. But, um, well, he says, I'd love to see a Bowie portrait someday. Mmm, that's a good one. I'm a big David Bowie fan, so... Hmm... Good idea, Lolly. Okay. Let's do our gray. So, uh, we can just take this dark color we mixed at the beginning. Um, let's do it down here. And our white. And I'm just gonna... I don't care if I get a little bit of other colors in here. Sometimes I want to make sure I get a, a clean white. I'm not concerned there. Now, again, there's this, there's maybe what, 60%, 70% white in this gray. So if I paint this over top of this area, I'm probably going to lose almost all of these lines. I might see a little bit of them, especially if there's a little bit of texture. But just keep that in mind. If you're going to use gray for something, there's going to be a lot of white in it that it, it might obliterate a little bit. Um, oops, we want... That's not bad. I think what I will do is just add a little bit of matte medium in here. A little drops. It's going to thin it out. That's going to help prevent my underpainting lines and maybe a little bit of underdrawing from disappearing completely, as well as preserve a little bit of the yellow that was there.
And, you know, there's kind of some browns and blues, little highlights all over this jacket. We'll get to those in subsequent layers. I mean, you could, like, so there's, I'd say predominantly when I would see other people on YouTube that teach painting, what they tried to would do, especially because a lot of them also teach in oil paint, um, is that they might paint, try to mix all of these colors and then paint them wet on wet onto an oil paint. Uh, because you've got that paint stays wet for a long period of time, so you can just sort of mix a little bit of blue and, and paint right into it and blend it in. And that is one of the advantages with oil paint. And I know as soon as I say that, people say, You gotta do an oil painting class. Maybe. But uh, I think before I do an oil painting class, I'll probably reboot my drawing class again. Since my drawing class, which I did here on YouTube, and you can watch right now if you want, that is like hugely popular. <laughs> it's, it's pretty wild that it's the amount of views that drawing course I did. It's all free here on YouTube. Which is not surprising because there's a lot more people. Drawing is far more accessible than painting ever will be because drawing you can just fish a pencil out of, uh, you know, uh, from the library and, you know, and then start drawing with some recycled paper you found in the garbage. Boom, you're off and running. Whereas painting just requires more supplies, more money, and space, you gotta clean up and all that kind of stuff. So, not everyone has the space and the means to, to take up painting as a hobby, which I understand. Um, funny that's pretty funny um you know we have these side by side it's coming along like you know this yellow it's a little patchy right now we're gonna do some more layers but i also don't mind i mean that's that'll kind of act as, as textures as we go forward um okay so Cartoon Mark says, great work, thumbs up. Thumbs up to you, Cartoon Mark. Thanks for stopping by. Okay. Ah. If you get at those little things you just got to be careful not to over over wipe now that's the benefit of keeping a little bit of paint left over where is that one? A little hair or something got embedded in there let's see
Sometimes you just it's better just to let things alone. Mm. We'll see. It's a little shiny right now because it's wet. Okay. Um before I move on, I just there's this his ears. A little bit dark, so I just want to bring that back. Okay. So I'm just going to quickly blow dry this before we move on. See, I think do I have yeah okay do I got this queued up here I'm looking I look so smart <laughs> um, okay so what I wanted to show here is just this is from James Gurney's it's from his book um, uh, which book is it that he put this in but I think this is this is his blog James Gurney we did a painting on James Gurney and um, he I, and I showed some of the books that he's put out I, James Gurney is I think one of the great painters of today uh, especially, he, he's also a YouTuber. You can watch videos. He regularly posts him doing a lot of painting on location. Um, but I find this like really helpful. This idea of the zones of the face, and in his book he goes into a little bit more depth about it. But he sort of just talks about like, you know, having lighter colors on the top and kind of more muted colors below. So you have kind of a kind of on the forehead where the skin is is quite thin. You know this yellow or white brow kind of the mid zone here this red kind of a little bit warmer and then below down here bluer and green grayish kind of colors right and you know he shows this example here Gilbert Stewart's uh, George Washington portrait um, Ilya Ripon we're gonna do a Ripon painting at some point upcoming close here he's a great Ukrainian artist um, Let's think though. So anyway, I, just, I was just showing that because I was just thinking about how we want to approach the face now. Because what we've got, we've got our local color established, the color that's underneath everything. And then we can think about using some of the, these concepts to the, the colors that we mix over top of that local color, right? So, um, Let's go to oops, back to here. And should we go to the I was, you know, I was going to do the face first after I just mentioned that, but I think what I want to do is actually probably the jacket because I want to be able to do let's say the hands over top of the jacket. So, it's also worth just I think just so I can remember 
<laughs> what we're doing. Okay, so now that we've got our background finished, we've got, done the foreground layer pass once. I think our background is established. I don't know if I'm going to want to do any more work in the background. Let's kind of do a second pass on the foreground. So some people may even consider what we've got right now to be an underpainting. I would say that as far as I'm concerned, our underpainting was finished a little bit earlier than that. But um, now what I want to do is let's paint the jacket and then we'll do the hands and face and hair. And then we might, then we'll do our finishing touches, I think. So, um, what should we do first? Maybe the collar and the shirt, I think. So, um, it also looks like he might be just modifying this whole painting with this kind of greenish color that he puts over a lot of other things. That's interesting. I wonder how to do that. White speckles or something. Okay, so how about let's take our blue that we had here from before. Let's make a little bit more of it. So we'll take our our cool blue and white. That's a great color. Uh, we don't want to use it everywhere though. So let's take it and now let's, I think, dive in. And we've got this, basically the same color again, but we'll do this as a bit of like highlights maybe. Sort of going over because it looks like the light is hitting coming from the left, right? So it's hitting this side of his face. We've got darker, so this side here is where we're going to get some of the highlights, and we we're probably going to take a little bit of this and do that again after we do the neck. Let's just take, uh, let's just take a bit of this gray. It doesn't really matter which one it is. So just sort of slightly darkening this, these parts of the collar that are not directly in the light. this collar to kind of curl back around That's something I think I'll have to adjust when I get my um, gray coming back on his jacket there we'll tackle that maybe even just bring this up Okay. 
Um, while that dries, I just wiped my brush off, but I'm gonna take some of this white. I want some, a little bit more white, there we go. Not completely white, at least not just yet. And I think here I'm just gonna do some little dots or spots or Okay, I think I'll leave that right now. Let's do the 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 jacket because I think we can do a lot of the glazing just as one color here. So we'll go to the jacket itself, and we we mix that color prior already. So now we're we're just gonna add some nuance to it, lighten it, darken it, and then we'll come back and and work on that color. So, we'll take, so this is the gray, right? Remember, to make that gray, we made, we took our cool blue, cool yellow, and cool red. We mixed it together, and we just added some white. Again, you could just use black if you wanted to and add white, and you've got a gray. But I always think it's nice to, to make our own gray, because that way every painting looks a little bit different. They all have slightly different grays rather than the same consistent thing. Um, I mean, I was just thinking about that just today or yesterday. I was looking at a bunch of the paintings we've done together and it's like, you'd think, wow, we're just using the same seven tubes of paint over and over. You'd think they'd all start to look very similar. And I don't know if you, there'd be very few people would be able to tell you those are all just using seven tubes of paint. Anyway, uh, let me see. Let's go to our darker color first, I think. And I kind of like this little bit of, what, where, did, where did we use that? Well, that was for the hair. So let's take this gray. In fact, let's make a little bit more of it. A little bit more dark. Take some more white. Let's take a bit of this. Cool. Okay. So. Okay. 
So you notice I'm not radically altering this color, just for getting a bit of this kind of magenta almost in here. Take a little bit more of that color. Just want to be careful I don't go too far, so let's just take a bit more gray in there. It's okay to, to start. Now I'm just gonna wipe that paint off. And I'm not even gonna bother washing this brush. I'm just gonna now do the same thing, but in the opposite direction. I'm gonna take this gray and let's take some of our cool blue and white and mix that into here. And let's actually take a little bit more white. This will be kind of like highlights, but it's got a bit of a slightly bluish quality. A little bit more white. That might be good enough. Let's just see. Almost too. That's too much, right? I kept thinking, oh, I gotta. You know. So let's just take a bit more of our dark color. Bring that down. I mean, I want to use that color eventually, but I'm not quite ready to go that light. Building up to it.
and there's a little bit of reflected light just on the back of his jacket here so just Cool. I think it's just time for a little sip of tea. We're doing, we're doing pretty good to get this far. You know, it took me really about an hour and 20 minutes of painting after I blabbed on for quite a while, um, as is usual. I'm sure there's a number of you who are like, you know what, I'm just going to tune in after the first hour. That first hour, there's a lot of talking. Um, now, so now let's go back to the other side. So we, we kind of started with our, our, um, uh, our local color, right? So we started, we tried to find the middle value and then what did I do? I went, so let's, let's go this way. Started with my middle value and then I went darker and lighter. Now I'm going to go darker and then afterwards I'm going to go lighter. Now that's the way that I like to paint. I know that there are artists that like to go the opposite. They might do the local color and then they might go right to the darkest and right to the lightest and then start bridging the gap. There's nothing wrong with that approach. There's, there's certainly lots of artists today and throughout history that have done that. I just prefer to work this way. So take it or leave it. Um, in fact, we could start, we could do some glazing really at this stage. I'm just trying to, what would be the fastest way to start really knocking this painting out? Let's do a little bit of a, he's pretty bold with some of these darker areas. So let's do that and see how much we can get away with. So let's just take a bigger brush. Let's take this and again, I'm going to do this in the, in the slightly reddish space. I'll include that in the shadow. Yeah. Cause I, the more I look at it, the more I, I see that in there. So that's, that's going to be quite a bold jump forward. It's not quite black, which we'll get into here, but I'd, I'd never want to do personally again i don't usually like jumping right to the i like to kind of save my high my high, brightest highlight and my darkest dark to the near the very very end because i if i always want to make sure that i have if 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 i put a dark dark down and that's in fact not the darkest spot in the painting then what do i do now i've got to lighten that up I'd rather just sort of m m make my way there. Okay. Okay, so let's take this dark, dark color. Is this dry?
You notice, like, I like to kind of just jump around a lot when I'm painting, kind of back and forth, and... Um, I always sort of it gives me a satisfaction that, like, I can see the painting evolving like a Polaroid or something, rather than just getting one area really well done and then moving on. That's just my preference, my style. So there's going to be a few of these lines that I'm going to do even darker towards the end. That's why I'm actually making some of these lines a little bit wider so that there'll be a little bit of a darker line inside of it. I went the wrong way, didn't I? Okay, let's just wipe this little bit off.
Some, I just use, sometimes use my fingers rather than to, to, I'm not trying to erase it, I'm just smudging it. It's almost like, you know, when you're drawing and you smudge your finger to get the colors to the pencil to blend a little bit. If there's a button here, there's probably one right there. There's gonna be another button. Let's do that again. Here, here. Yeah, right about. Oops, that's not on camera. There we go. <laughs> oh, there's my mom joined the chat there. I am I am here just painting away kind of quietly, I guess. You know, I'd be interested to know how long it took him to make a painting like this because he was cranking out a lot of stuff and clearly you know one thing that I've gotten to know a number of illustrators over the course of my life going to school with them um, sharing classes with them and working alongside them after graduation and um, Illustrators are really taught to paint very quickly, right? It's because usually they're they're working for companies and they're they're they've got tight deadlines, and 
So some of the techniques and things that we we do are used by illustrators, but also there's a lot of things that they do to kind of uh, work more quickly. Because one thing, off, you know, often illustrators are, are making things that are going to be reproduced in books, magazines, newspapers, advertisements, etc. And maybe they're going to be scanned into the computer and then uh, altered again afterwards. And so the there there can be it doesn't necessarily have to look great in person I guess is the long story short where I'm getting to um, so as long as it looks good in a photograph that's all they need and thank you for your service that's good let's we'll move on right so whereas you know usually painters want their paintings to look good in person as well as in a photograph which is one of the reasons why sometimes uh, paintings that are made like some of the Larry Salk images we were looking at earlier might have just been thrown away unfortunately after they were made is sometimes they might have been done really quickly and they might not have looked so great in person up close Right, because they might have been painted quite large and then re-photographed. And sometimes there's it'd be additional work that would be done after it's painted. Um, before the computers were, you might do in the dark room. And um, and there's also like I, I I know some illustrators. I remember seeing artwork that they did for uh, like various jobs and being like oh that's a really cool painting like uh can you can i have it and they're like no unfortunately like the you know the contract is once the image is done i can't use it for anything i can't put it on my website or wherever facebook um and so it doesn't it's not really allowed to have a life after it's been used in the printing process or for whatever marketing purpose etc so sometimes not only they, they might some people might want to keep them but it might be part of the contract that it actually gets destroyed which is um, kind of a shame eh? Um, Good enough for this initial pass on that. We just back out. So I'll probably do a little bit of glazing just to darken down some of these areas um, afterwards. Like this, we could just paint right now, but I'm afraid it might be a little flat, so I'm gonna wait on that. Yeah. Again, let's this brush is sort of starting to seize up with so much paint on it drying. <laughs> oh, 
Well, at least my mother and father know where I am. <laughs> I can tune in and, and know that I'm not getting myself in trouble. <laughs> what was I just worried about you? Um, okay. So... I think I might go... Let's, let's do the... Let's do the, the, the face and hands next. And then the hair, and then we'll come back and finish the jacket. I think that sounds appropriate. Some sort of spam phone call coming in here. What is area code 201? I wonder what that is. Okay. It doesn't matter. Uh. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Rotten paint. Should I have done the highlights? You know, let's let's do the face. Let's do the face right now. All oh, sorts of messages blown up on my phone there. Um, okay, so originally we put down our what we call the local color the color that's in between our brightest and darkest values our lightest and, and darkest values uh, and so now let's do some darker values now so I, I wonder that paint can we make it work Zoom in. So I'm going to look at something not quite the darkest here, but a little bit darker, like um, maybe something like this value here. So it's kind of like the color that we had already but it's got a little bit more blue in it so maybe let's mix this um, I'll just do this off to the top here sorry I guess maybe that wasn't on camera when I just did that All right so I'm looking at something a little bit darker. All right, that this is the color that I had on the face originally. So we'll take that. And now let's start. Oh, it's much darker than I expected. It's okay. So I'm painting in all of the dark areas. Going over all of those areas. And sometimes there's highlights in those dark areas, but we can paint that back later on.
Okay, that's a good start for that. Well, I've got the same color on my brush. Let's just go down to the hands and, and do the same thing. All right, so that we keep the face and hands consistent. Although, obviously, some, some, you know, that there's can be quite a difference at times, but just for our purpose, we'll... big veiny hands here that's that can be kind of tricky to do all of this Good. <laughs> okay, so let's, um, I'm going to do go the opposite direction now. I'm going to put a little bit of highlights in. So, just gonna wipe off a bit of paint. Um, let's just clean these brushes. Ah, uh, Don, I had to get a fridge fixed. Yikes, that could be expensive. $700 repair. Yikes. Okay. So now, now what I, I think I want to put a little bit of, of, a uh, little bit of warmth in this face. A little bit of, um, so I'm going to take some white and red. Highlight. Let's take this paint. So I'm just lightening this up. Remember that was our the, the color for the face. So this is a little bit lighter, and I've got a little bit of pink inside of it, warm red that I can use to put into my lighter areas of the face. Now I'm going for really just the 
the lightest areas. I want to keep my... I'm staying out of the darker areas unless there's like... Let's say like right here there's a bit of outline. And I also want to keep preserve a little bit of my underpainting color. That cheekbone's gonna have to come up a little bit. But... Um... That's not bad. Let's do this. Let's go down to the hands and, and tackle that for a few minutes.
back up to, oh, I was going to do just a few of those little veins on his hands there for a, so, Rachel says, my Kramer looks a lot more like Tom Waits. Well, y y maybe maybe we'll, I'll be joining you soon here. You never know. <laughs> I like that. That's pretty funny. You know, I got to say, I, I, I like Tom Waits as a person. He seems like I've seen interviews. I've seen him in movies. He's been in a lot of my favorite Jim Jarmusch films. I'm a big Jim Jarmusch film. A fan. Never been the biggest fan of the music itself. And I, I don't know some people are like, oh, okay, dislike, hit that dislike button. I just, I don't know. Just never, I never, it always, his voice always sounded a little, kind of a little bit too much, too, too ridiculous for me, but. Okay, uh, let's go the other way. I'm gonna go, let's go a bit darker now. Let's go into some of the darker areas. Actually, you know what? Maybe before I go, I, I wanna get a little bit of the, the light in his eyes here before too long. I'm gonna take some white. And the color I was just using, just a much lighter version, which I'm gonna use basically the same color in a few moments again, but just want to get a little bit of I guess since I'm painting with this, let's. I just got out my brush. Let's just do a little bit more. Might as well. All right. So these are like the brightest highlights, pretty much. It's not a white, it's it's still got quite a lot of pink in here, but neglected these ears I just realized the ears never get enough love the ears are always the, the forgotten part of the face uh, the, I'm surprised the ears haven't uh, unionized or something and for more respect amongst their facial feature um, comrades.
work on that nose a little bit more. Um, oh, I just realized before I remember I was saying how these poor ear neglected ears. So this light um, is a, is obviously some other light source that is popping light back on, reflecting light back onto the side of the face. Otherwise it would be in, bathed in darkness. So this also tells me that this is probably based on a photograph, a studio photo. Not that artists don't use lighting like this for their uh, their subjects, but okay. Down to the hands. And when you're doing this kind of thing, like, as long as you're just looking at the, the image and just looking for the brightest parts, you can't really go wrong. All the answers are kind of like right here. So... So now we just need to go much darker because uh, we've gone, we've done two, we did start with our local color, then we went darker, then we went lighter, and then we went lighter again. So now we need to go back to that darker area. And I think we can pen, I mean, well, I don't want to speak too soon, but it's possible that after this next little pass, we could be getting closer to being done. Um, it just depends on how long you, how many of these back and forths you want to do. The more you do, the more of a likeness you're going to get, the more accurate it's going to be, the more photorealistic it's going to be. The less you do, the more stylized it's going to be, the more impressionist uh, it's going to appear, right? Okay. So... Um, just looking 
at this painting for what the next kind of color I want to do is. I think I want to go, I'm going to take a darker color, we'll do maybe the eyebrows, mm, you know what, I want to build up to that, right, let's let's do something a little bit in, just before that, something just a, a much darker brown, potentially even a brown that we can then use to do the hair, maybe that's what we'll do, we'll do a bit of, we'll, we'll use this color, I think this is our brown from before that we used for the background. If I just take this in here. Again, still want to keep using some of the colors that we established already so that everything kind of is all working in concert. Oops, none of that's on camera. Um, I can actually, I'm going to take a little bit more of my dark color. Oops. So that's that's much darker than anything else on here. You know, I'm kind of going a few steps. Um, you know, I, again, I could be doing a lot many more steps. I'm, I'm just for the sake of time, probably going to do maybe one or two more of these. So, again, let's go into the, in fact, I, I will do a little bit of the eyebrows, because we're, we're going to go, basically, we'll put our black into these areas shortly, but, um, I love these really pouty lips in this photo. Pretty funny, pretty silly. It does pose a bit of a challenge for us, but.
Okay, like, so right now I am tempted to put like some bit of a bluer kind of uh, greenish colors down in here. And maybe bring a little bit more yellow back up at the top, but let's, let's get there. Uh, shortly, let's go back down to the hands. So I could see like a little bit, they're a little bit orangey these fingers and I maybe could have used a little bit more of my uh, uh, little more pinkish color on top of there. But let's, let's maybe do that afterwards if there's time. Um, okay. Isaac is talking about getting feedback on the drawings. Tomorrow is a feedback episode, so if you've got some artwork up on the Facebook group, I'll take a look at it and answer any questions tomorrow at 3 o'clock Pacific time. And if you can't tune in, then certainly um, I'll, I'll still get to them, hopefully answer any questions you might have about them. Uh, oh, you know what? I was going to do the hair... I think with that color, oh, well, it's not really, I, think I want, question in my mind. Let's do, use a bit of this color. doesn't it? So let's take 
uh, some of our darker color. And here's some of the some brown from before. I'm just gonna mix that together. Not going to my darkest dark, but getting there. So just sort of laying in a couple of little lines of hair where it's sort of a little bit because we have some lighter and darker areas. This hair is going to come out a little bit more this way. Uh, I'm gonna let that dry while that's drying. I'm gonna take a little bit of my warm blue, mix this into my dark color, but mostly warm blue. Maybe just a little bit of white. Oh, it might have been too much. And I want to look for just a few places where I can put this into the lower half of his face down here. shadows under the eyes just a bit. put it into this brown that I was just painting with a little bit earlier.
Okay, let's just uh, take a bit of this. I'm going to take the same color I was just applying to the hair and do a little bit more in the hands. None of that was on camera. Ah, okay. I don't, I don't think you missed too much. It's the same sort of thing I've been doing, but uh, ah, oh, drive me nuts when I do that. Okay, it's just nothing happening on camera. Ah. Okay. So now I'm just gonna start. Uh, giving a little bit of texture to this hair. too far with that blue or it's going to look pretty silly but okay so on the on the opposite side of things now that we got a bit of that blue in the bottom part of the face let's just take a little bit of uh, some of this warm let's just take some warm yellow and white Predominantly white, so let's just take more and more white. So that we'll do a bit of these highlights. Let's take a bit of um, some of this warm red and white, a little bit more on the pinkish side.
maybe just taking a little bit of uh, gray, taking a little bit of my black and putting this into here so that it just gets, it's not quite such an intense pink. So let's take a bit more of that. And where else would we expect a bit of this? On the cheeks up here. Do a little bit of this reflected there. So let's do the same thing down in, in the fingers here. Um, I'm going to take again a little, oops, that's a bit too much white. this as a little bit of just bring a bit of life into these hands Let's just do a little bit of, I was gonna say, let's add a little nuance, so let's do that. We'll add a little nuance, just get a little bit darker. Might be going a little far. Um, okay, let's just see where we're at. We're getting pretty close. We're getting pretty close there, right? <laughs> oh, this is. Check your Instagram messages. I'll definitely, definitely check for sure. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so I think what I want to do now, let me see, I just want to get that blue.
actually, you know, I'm just going to start doing this, my blue and dark, darker outlines around the eyes. Um, Droplets. Okay, I'll have to fix that background. Uh, okay. Hmm. That blue's pretty much dried up, so I'm just gonna go right to my darkest color and just start doing the outline. Screw it. Doesn't have to be too nuanced, right? So you can see why I'm saving my black for the very, 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 very end here, because it's just little things that I'm adding to the painting. Like just the, I usually just do the top eyelid, the eye, eyebrow, nostrils, darken underneath his uh, chin there a bit more. fingerprints of this painting. Okay. 
Maybe let's, I'm gonna do the hands while I wait for the face to dry. Take a bit of white. Looks like there's a bit of yellow on that, but I actually don't mind that. I don't know. Oh, I guess that was from there. I was like, did I just washed my brush? Uh, you know, I was going to paint that directly, but I, let's. I want to make a gray. Actually, I'm going to take make a kind of brownish gray. This is my. Uh, where did I use this brown? I think for hair. I think is it. So let's just take some white, mix this in there. Because now I'm going to put a little bit of the highlights in the hair, but I don't want to just paint white in there. I don't really see any actual white. And compared to the dark hair already, this is going to be appear very very bright. So, in fact, let's just I'm going to blow dry this before I start t touching anything.
So some of these hairs, as they go up, out of, off the main body of the hair, are, are, are not quite bright enough, or light enough. So there'll be a little bit of highlights I'll put in over top of this. I'm also going to darken a little bit. Put some black hairs in here in a moment. Just my the black that I've mixed, the same black that I used to do some of those facial features a few moments ago to darken them down a bit. And let's do the same thing. So I don't want to get rid of all of that brown that's underneath, because I like that. It sort of just gives a little bit of life. Um, but I do want to sort of go in between these lines. So, I don't know how wild I want to make this, I mean, it looks pretty wild as it is. I just want to be careful about, otherwise, if I go t too wild, I mean, it looks like Elvira or something, right? We're just going to get this massive mane, and it's going to look a little bit weird. Um, maybe just a little bit. You know, I don't know. I'm getting kind of close. This collar is driving me nuts. I feel like I need to adjust that. So let's go back to this blue and white. And take a bit of gray. A little 
bit too dark. <laughs> oh my goodness that's pretty funny this thing okay so I think um, we're getting closer to the end here okay so right now I just want to do a few finishing touches I want to do a little bit of glazing and um and then I think I'm gonna be done. Like there's maybe a little bit of areas where I got a little bit of paint on the edges. My fingers, I dripped some paint here. Or my fingers pulled some paint off. Little tiny details, but stuff that um, is important. So maybe I'll just tackle those little things right now. Molly says, I shouldn't be surprised because you always nail it, but this is so good. I appreciate that. Thank you, Molly. That's so sweet of you. Don't, don't, uh, I mean, just be careful before we pass judgment. Painting's not done. Um, uh, let's, I'm going to blow dry this because I want to do a little bit of glazing just underneath the jacket here. Maybe a little on the collar. And then I think I'll, we'll be done. Just noticing a little thing, you know, with his cheek here. Noticing this area here. I just want to trim that down a little bit. So let's take maybe even just this brown that we we're just kind of using.
Okay, so let's glaze here. The reason why I want to do a glaze is I think it's just going to give a little bit more subtlety in that area, and I don't want to take away from all that color that we got. So, this palette's pretty full. Where can I paint? Um... Let's get out the, the dirty yellow. <laughs> so let's, I'm just going to take my darkest color. And some glazing fluid. In fact... most of that. And it's going to take a little bit of warm red and put that in there. Because that coincides with some of that. It's, this is basically, it's going to make it a little bit purpley because there's some blue in this dark color, right? So Let's see. I'm going to go all the way to that edge, and then I'm going to probably do this a second time. Just darken this whole jacket down.
So here I'm able to really modify some of those pink colors that I put down earlier, but do it in an easier way that's, that's, that I can get great effects with. It's also pretty subtle. Oops. Trying to do this by mixing colors like we were doing a little bit earlier is just so painstaking and difficult and here I can just do this all real quick. I think his collar got a little bit bigger somehow. I'm not sure. I missed that. Right, and then we're going to blow dry this in a second, but we can also then go back over these lines and just continue kind of darkening things. We can even darken a bit on this hand. Okay. So let's just blow dry this. bit more glazing fluid let's just do a little bit more
Okay. And I think just to, to bring this to closer to a conclusion, last little thing I want to do is just put a little bit of a highlight on these eyes. Just take a bit of white. Pure white. And careful not to get any paint on my fingers. I got paint all over my good jeans, but that's maybe it's time for another pair of painting pants anyway. Okay, so, um, it's that time where we're just going to take a look at these paintings side by side, do a quick little evaluation, and call it a day. So, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please consider liking, subscribing, hit the notification bell. Tomorrow, we are doing a special feedback episode where you send your art to the Facebook page. I take a look at it, pull it all off, and share feedback live. So do that. Join the Facebook group and participate. It's free. Why not, right? We all want to get better. Asking an artist who knows how to paint and teaches painting might be a good idea. If you found this at all interesting and helpful, you learned something, maybe it's worth a dollar, you can consider leaving a donation. There's a lots of different avenues to do so. You can contact me directly through the Facebook group. Send me a message and you can transfer money that way. Or like Lolly, you can use the Super Chat function. Thank you, Lolly. That's awesome. Um, and with that, let's take a look at these side by side. <laughs> and, um, there we go. So in about three and a half hours, that's what we were able to cook up. You know, I'm, I'm pretty happy considering, you know, I'm sure that he probably spent a longer on, on his painting and obviously got way more detail than I was able to do. But I think, you know, for for the, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I, 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 you know, the background is a little bit different. I think we could have, we're, we were pretty close there. If we just spent more time, we would have been able to do it. But again, it's probably not a much concern for most people watching, so I didn't do that. I am just noticing that I didn't do the highlights on the clothes. Mm. I got all my darker values, but I didn't get some of the lighter values. I got to say, though, I'm not too worked up about that you know there could be a highlight right there some highlights in these folds 
Uh, I think I can I can walk away. That's, that's okay for me. Uh, but that's those are little details that that would be good to have, right? Um, so let's just take a look at. Oops. <laughs> so we we got pretty close to the likeness. Um. I think a big part of, of the likeness is actually the lips and that those pouty lips. I think that is pretty important. I think the hair definitely plays a role, getting kind of some wild hair going on. I think that helps. Um, we also used, you know, some bit of more blue down on the bottom and a little bit more yellow up top to create some different zones in the face. I think that's okay. And if we just scroll down there to the hands, let's see. Yeah, I mean, again, his painting is much bigger, about four times the size of this. So we didn't. It's hard to get some of those details and the the digits and the fingernails and all that kind of stuff, but. So mine is just sort of real brushy application there. I, you know, I could have done little dots on the buttons, that kind of thing. But I don't know. I think we can call that a day. Um, one thing, just before I go, I, I, what I usually do is... I usually do this right after the, each episode, but let's just do this real quick right now is when I've got extra paint on my palette, I just scoop it off and continue building up. Look at all that blue. Mm, yum, yum, yum. Building up my Jay DeFeo painting. I think this is just gonna be fun. Like, I, this feels like very much in the spirit of Jay DeFeo. It's just a continually build and build and build and who knows maybe a year from now just like Jay DeFeo I'll need a crane to get it out of the house which is exactly what happened that's the only way she was able to get this painting out of the house and it was starting to cause problems with the foundation of the apartment that was starting to sag you know it weighed a couple tons Anyway, you can watch that episode. We also learned how to use um, uh, paper mache to do this. So that's good enough. All right, nice thick painting. Look at that <laughs> chunky painting. And I also take you know the ends of these. I just peel these off and let's you know just glue it right in there to help build up the texture, right? Why not? Okay. So, that brings us to the end of today's episode. <laughs> Thank you everyone for painting along with me. And uh, we'll see you guys in the very near future on tomorrow's episode or feedback episode so 24 hours or less from now we'll see you guys soon everybody have a wonderful night happy april fool's day i'll talk to you all soon good night